So, um, I'm getting evicted. <laughs> hey there, there, my name is Michael. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. No, I'm not uh, being evicted. I simply um, am moving. Uh, and this is the final episode, uh, if you can't tell by the very weird looking set behind me, that is being filmed in this particular uh, apartment. So it's a little solemn for me, but here we are. <laughs> Today we're going to take a quick look at a classic cocktail by the name of the Ramos Gin Fizz, which is sort of uh, impossible to not know about already, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, the Ramos Gin Fizz was invented by Henry Charles or Carl Ramos in 1888 when he worked at the Imperial Cabinet Saloon in New Orleans. New Orleans was actually a big spot, uh, big spot for the cocktail world, the cocktail universe, the beginnings of what we now call mixology. And it in the case of the Ramos Gin Fizz, was one of the most popular, if not, you know, somehow more popular than New Orleans, New Orleans at the time classic, the Sazerac, uh, just based on how much people loved it. <laughs> Essentially, a Ramos Gin Fizz is a variation on a regular Gin Fizz, which uses egg white, uh, citrus, gin, and soda uh, to create like a lengthened sort of Collins style drink, but with a sort of creamy, silky mouthfeel from the egg white. The Ramos Gin Fizz uh, doubles down on the citrus flavors using orange blossom water and then a mix of lemon and lime juice, uh, while also introducing uh, orange blossom water for a floral kick and cream to sort of continue to develop the mouthfeel and sort of smoothness of the drink. The way that I saw a lot of people refer to it was as somewhere between a Tom Collins and a milkshake, which sounds Really, really awesome. Who doesn't love the idea of a boozy milkshake? <laughs> Considering I have to do a bunch of moving, I really can't go into more detail than that. Uh, but I will say the one thing that everybody wanted to talk about when I was researching how to make this cocktail correctly was how to get a good foam on top. A Ramos Gin Fizz is supposed to have a foam thick enough to extend beyond the length of your glass uh, when you are done shaking it. So you essentially pour in your soda and the foam forms a head that floats above the lip of the soda glass. I think that that's fucking pointless. It's not about this dumb showmanship thing. It's about making a good goddamn drink. So let's make a good goddamn drink. <laughs> I, uh, I am going to go ahead and substitute orange blossom water for orange bitters. Not the same thing, but if you get a good high quality bitters uh, that has a sort of orange, like a floral orange note to it, you'll essentially accomplish the same thing. And in either case, it's gonna be fine, I can promise you that. <laughs> everything ready to go, let's make a Ramos Gin Fizz. I'm gonna start this off with, I forgot my fucking measure. Damn it. <laughs> everything is everywhere in the house right now. I can't find shit. I'm gonna hate unpacking. I'm gonna be so, so lost in the sauce. Anyway, we're gonna start with three quarters of an ounce of a rich, simple syrup. So that is a two to one syrup specifically. I'm gonna follow that up with half an ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna come in with half an ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna follow that up with our bitters next. I'm gonna do two dashes of bitters. I'm using Fee Brothers orange bitters. As far as bitters goes, this is not a particularly floral one. This one is sort of like candy orange, but it's definitely um, bold enough, I think, to still stand up here and make a contribution that's worth, worth having been made. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, our egg white next. Now, if for anyone who hasn't put egg white in a cocktail before, uh, first of all, it's totally safe. If you're using fresh eggs that are, you know, within date that you have, you know, properly refrigerated, you have nothing to worry about. I mean, there's always a chance for foodborne illness, but there's always a food for chance for foodborne illness, uh, no matter what you do. So, uh, grow the fuck up. <laughs> in all fairness, we're emulsifying the egg white here, so it's actually going to be safe to eat. It's kind of like when you put, when you make a mayo, you emulsify egg yolk into oil. That's safe to eat there. It's exactly the same thing here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna hold off on the cream till last because I don't want it to curdle in that citrus juice. So I'm gonna do two ounces of gin. And then now finally, uh, a full ounce of some heavy cream, which always smells like it's gone off, even if you opened a fresh carton. I, I hate that. So uh, we're gonna do this in two stages. Uh, we have to emulsify this. We're gonna do that with a dry shake. Um, technically speaking, you can add, I've heard, I've heard people say, you can add a coil to your shaker um, and shake with ice as well as the coil and you can skip the dry shake step. I don't believe that and I wanna get a really good foam anyway. So we're gonna throw our coil in there, cap it up and tap it down. And then we're gonna do this dry shake for 
about 25 seconds-ish. A lot of modern bartenders look at how often Ramos shook his fizz, his fizzes, fizz fizzes, fuck. Looked at, they look at how long Ramos was shaking the fizzes for, and it was like upwards of 12, 15 minutes, which is just too, too goddamn long. He hired a whole line of people to shake cocktails for him for that reason. It, that's a fucking stupid move, dude. I don't know why you would even bother. Anyway, 25 second dry shake. Whew. Damn. Uh, okay. Okay, I think we're good. I'm making flashbacks to the Garibaldi episode, which also probably looked as weird as this because I had no natural light to film with. This is, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna uncap this here, fish my coil out, and what we're gonna do is shake with just a single piece of large format ice, like a single large cube. Um, that's gonna help us continue to agitate, but also chill and dilute to where we wanna be uh, without compromising our foam, because over diluting will will do that, unfortunately. Get it back up, tap it back down, and we'll shake for, let's just say another 20 seconds or so, because we really do want to get this as thick a foam as possible. And the more time we shake it for, the better that will be accomplished. Boom. You can grab a Collins style glass of our choosing. This is a freshly cleaned one that I think has the right volume for this. And we're gonna uncap our cocktail. Ooh, that's firm. Okay, hold up. There we go. <laughs> uncap it and double strain that in. You wanna double strain because you do wanna catch that uh, egg embryo <laughs> piece that will inevitably be in there. <laughs> now, like I said earlier, uh, I'm not convinced that a good Ramos is made uh, to be as frothy as possible. So I'm just gonna grab our soda water here and just top this up to a nice wash line, like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Ramos Gin Fizz. Alrighty, well, our station is more or less cleaned up. Um, I have to do like a deep clean before I move this bar, so no shot am I doing that right now. Let's go ahead and give our Ramos a try. As you can see, I've got this nice kind of thick semi-stable foam here. I don't think it would flow up past the lip of this glass very well. Um, but it's definitely actually a lot thicker than it looks. It looks like it goes to about there, maybe? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> I'm actually very excited, hold on. Okay, let's go ahead and give our Ramos a sip. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, that's... That's cool. So it's definitely a drink you want to have a straw with, but uh, I don't have any straws in the house right now. Because that foam looked like it went to about here. It goes to about there. <laughs> the cream and the egg white really do emulsify into this super thick and like potent foam that if I were to top this off anymore, I think I'd actually get float above, above the edge of the glass like that. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, hey, okay. I don't, I don't buy the gimmick, but I, I pulled it off. It's really interesting, it's really good, it is very, orange creamsicle-esque, but it's got this very potent sort of tartness uh, actually in the foam itself uh, from both the lemon and the lime juice. They're being uh, moderated pretty well by the amount of simple syrup in there, but it's not quite enough, I think, to make it sweet like a milkshake would be. It's definitely a lot more balanced than that. It's not just pure dessert. Really, what this is embracing most for me is a very, very light, gin botanical and citrusy forwardness that has this nice creaminess from the cream that is in there. Um, and I wouldn't normally consider botanicals and citrus to be something that goes well with cream, but in this case, it works phenomenally. It's it's actually really delicious and it's it's amazing. It's, it's actually really, really good. Oh man, that is so fascinating. You get Everything that was put into it, you can pick apart each individual element, but it's also just got this really nice, pleasant airiness to it that is uniquely its own. And that's just so much fun, wow. Maybe a little undersweet, I would like it to be a little sweeter. I think a full ounce of a simple syrup here is probably what you wanna go for. Cause there's not enough sweetness in, in, in heavy cream 
really. I mean, if you're getting re re you know, real cream, it's just cream. There's not a lot of sweetness there. Um, it's not enough to really put it towards the balance that I want it to be. I want this to be sweeter, um, but as is, it's it's really, really great. <laughs> perfect for perfect for summer, because it's just light and airy and cold and, and, and ginny, oh, so good. That is amazing. And honestly, I made it wrong. Um, the orange bitters is there, and it reads like orange bitters. Um, orange blossom water is way different. It's entirely floral. It is a cooking ingredient. And I know where I can get it near me. I just don't have the chance to go out and do it because starting tomorrow, I won't live here anymore. So I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of shit and then have to come back and move it all again. We know whatever. But even without it being made 100% correctly, it's still an awesome cocktail. And definitely one that I think you should give a try at home. Uh, even if it is one of the most physically demanding cocktails that I could have made, especially on a day where I'm about to go move a bunch of heavy boxes. So, fun. Anyway, that comes to, that brings us to the end of our episode on the Ramos Gin Fizz. Let's do another reading from our book, Crisp Toasts by Andrew Frothingham and William Evans. I just, I elected to move us beyond the, um, the section on, on absent friends uh, last episode and move on to our next entry, Accountants. Today's crisp toast goes as such. Here's to our accountant. If we had royalty in America, he'd surely be a count. Cheers. Thank you so for watching the final episode to come out of this set. Um, I had a lot of fun starting the show here. Um, part of me is really gonna miss it because things are gonna look a little different. I mean, the show's gonna be the same, but things are gonna look a little different at the new place. And I just, I got so used to this and it's surreal that it's changing now. Um, but you know, without you guys, it never would have happened. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys stick with me through uh, a set change and some other advancements I'm gonna make to the, uh, to the show in the near future. Um, and here's to uh, a whole new set and an infinitely greater number of videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.